It's Wednesday, March 25th, and we're coming to you from the closed Lake Superior Railroad Museum at the St. Louis County Depot in downtown Duluth. And we're closed except for these little vignettes of history about railroading. And today, March 25th, is an important date in railroad history. It was in 1807, 213 years ago today, that the very first passenger was carried on a railroad. Passenger railroad service didn't start here in the United States. No, it started in England, on a railroad that had been around for a while, hauling limestone from the quarries at Swan Sea and Mumbles. The Swan Sea and Mumbles Railroad in 1807 figured, well, we're carrying rocks, we might as well carry people, rock heads, as well. And they did on this date in 1807. Now this was a horse-drawn affair. Horses pulled the wagons, but they were on railroad tracks, so technically it was a horse-powered railroad. Steam engines didn't enter the picture until 1825 when George and his son Robert Stevenson built this locomotive for the Darlington and Stockton Railway, also in England. And where was the United States in all this? Well, sadly, we were pretty much behind the British. It wasn't until 1830 here in the United States that a guy by the name of Peter Cooper built the all-famous Tom Thumb steam locomotive for the brand new Baltimore and Ohio Railway. America's first real railroad. He built the Tom Thumb, and I think you'll notice something very interesting about the Tom Thumb locomotive and the one that Mr. Stevenson built way across the British Channel on the other side of the ocean. See anything missing in these two locomotives, the one the Stevenson boys built on one side of the ocean and the Tom Thumb for the Baltimore and Ohio Railway over here in America? Both of them made the engineer and the fireman stand outside exposed to the elements. You'll notice that in the coaches, well there, the passengers all had seats to sit on and a roof over their head. And not so much for the engineer and fireman, no place to sit and exposed to the elements. Well, it didn't take long before the idea came around to build a cabin over the working crew on board the engine. And at first it was called a cabin, and then it was just shortened to a cab. Of course, the cab had windows, so that was okay, but as engines became more powerful and the boilers longer, well, all of a sudden, that little window in the cab didn't give the engineer or the fireman much of a vantage over what was coming down at the track ahead. So, they had to do something. Well, what do you think they did? They stuck their head out the window. And that worked okay when trains were going five, 10 miles an hour. But now, trains were traveling at 30 and 40 and 50 and 60, 90 miles an hour. All of a sudden, sticking your head out the window isn't such a great idea. So now you're speeding down the track at say 60, 70 miles an hour and you stick your head out the window to see around the front of the boiler to understand what's coming down the line at you. Well, that's just not a good idea because you're going to get cinders and dust and sand in your face, not to mention the wind. The wind is going to be buffeting your face this entire time. So they needed to invent something I don't know, something to block the wind, something to maybe shield the engineer or fireman from the wind rushing at them as they sped along. Maybe they needed, ah, a windshield. They invented the windshield, a little piece of glass that allowed the engineer and conductor and the fireman to look out the window and see what was coming without getting buffeted. That windshield was a pretty good idea. Take a look at this picture of an early automobile. What do you notice that's similar to those early steam engines. Again, no protection for the driver or his passengers. No windshield. Well, that was okay when cars were traveling five, 10 miles an hour, but all of a sudden cars started going 25, 30, 35 miles an hour, and all of a sudden they had the same problem as the railroads did. So what did the automobile industry do? Well, they borrowed an idea from the trains and put windshields on automobiles. You see, the first person to invent something gets to name it, and it stays that name forever. So that means the windshield on your car or truck got its name from the railroads because if you work it hard enough, it all comes back to the railroad. Say, I want to thank our producer. His name is Josh Miller. Josh is our cameraman. He's our co-producer. He's responsible for hours and hours of editing once the footage is shot to make these little vignettes look as appealing and as nice as they do. He's a true professional and we're very lucky to have him on our staff here at the North Shore Scenic Railroad. In the meantime, we know why we're doing all this craziness, so you have to do your part. Cover your mouth, keep your social distance, wash your hands. If you're sick, stay home, and as always, let's take care of each other.